What's Going Down is DJ Payne One for BeatStars.com. Everybody's talking about this Panda song from Jermaine Dupri, who thinks it sounds like commas. It doesn't. It's a totally different tempo and chord progression and key. To the millions of listeners who have made it skyrocket to the number two position on Billboard's Hot 100. Matter of fact, I was just told it's in it's in the number one position now, so congratulations. As an outspoken advocate for producers, I've been asked what I thought about the story behind the Panda Beat, which is that the producer only got paid $200 for it by selling it to a designer back when he was unsigned via YouTube. People probably thought I'd be mad about that and go on this long rant about how beats are being sold too cheaply, etc, etc. Nope. Listen, this is something people need to understand. And it's crazy that people don't understand that, especially musicians, aspiring producers. Every time a song gets played anywhere, on radio, on television, in a bar, at a jukebox, at a music festival, performance royalties get paid to the people who own the publishing on that song. Songs can have multiple owners. You know, for example, you have the singer, you have the songwriter, you have the producer, you have the vocal producer. Maybe you have multiple producers. Maybe it's just a rapper and a producer. Maybe it's just a producer if it's an instrumental. But regardless, money is being paid out to those people who own a share of the record. And this is a performance royalty. This is publishing that we're talking about. So I figured that Menace, the United Kingdom-based producer who made the Panda beat, was all good. Panda song is being played everywhere, and it's on the Kanye West album also, so the plays are kind of doubling. But instead of guessing as to whether or not Menace owns a share of the Panda song, I asked him myself. And yes, he confirmed that he does, in fact, still own a share of the song. You know, some people were hitting me up saying, well, he already sold it, how does he get a share? This is something you don't understand. Just because you sell a beat doesn't mean you give up your publishing rights. You absolutely should never give up your, your publishing rights, ever. And, and honestly, it's not standard that you do give those up. What this also means is that when Kanye decided to use the Panda song on his uh, The Life of Pablo for the, for the record Father Stretch My Hands Part 2, Menace had to sign off on that, which means he also partially owns that song because he, he owns a, a piece of Panda. So not bad, right? And we should definitely look at this situation as producers, as a learning experience that drives home the point that publishing matters most. Now I want you to say that to yourself out loud every single day. Publishing matters most. People who are worried about that $200 price tag thinking that's the only money you get when you sell a beat, the upfront advance, stop it. And the reason I'm not making videos about the topic of publishing is because I'm really not qualified. Publishing is a complicated and dense world that you can't understand after watching a quick three or four minute video. So my advice to you is research this. Research it every day until you understand it and, and research it every day until you value it. And as Menace advises, get a good lawyer who can help you through these things and, and negotiate and advocate on your own behalf when you get into a situation where you're selling music to major artists and major labels. Now Menace also did mention that he's frustrated too with the way that producers are undercutting each other on the prices. I've been saying that as well. So him selling the beat for 200 is something he felt he had to do just to be competitive. And when you think about it, 200 isn't isn't a super low price by any means. Shout out to you to actually picking a number that you're comfortable with. Anyway, much success to you. Peace and pandas.